Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, and today we are going to take the absolute piss out of Sarah. I'm sorry, Sarah, but come on. There is some things that you do that just need to be addressed in the most comical way possible. And uh, yes, I, I think one of those days has come. Okay, but it's not just down to Sarah. Chris is one of those you know, that needs to be brought to attention as usual again and again. But before you do so, before we do so, please head on over to my new, brand new Instagram channel at the Raccoon Official and um, see what we've got going on over there. Thank you all so much for your support. It's much appreciated. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Sarah is being so entitled. I just have to bring attention to it. Anyway, um, we've had a really nice morning this morning. It's really, really nice to be some, somewhere where we can be outside and enjoy the weather, um, which is what obviously you want to do during summertime. It got really cold, not cold, but really cool last night. So everyone had another great night's sleep under their duvets. It dropped to 17 and then, at the lowest point, but it was so hilarious. There's still 25 in the van though. When I was editing our video, Isla and Esme and I were walking out in the hoodies to the toilet block at like, I don't know, whenever it was, and it just got dark. And it was 20, I know it was yep. like high 20s still then. And they were all like, it's, it's so, so cold. cold. <laughs> I was like, come stop laughing, man. Like, you girls literally need to wake up, man. Yeah, but they have been in low 40s. No, know, high 30s, low 40s. It, it was, did feel it cold, cold, chilly last night. It wasn't cold, but it felt chilly. But it was still 25 degrees. <laughs> but it did drop to 17, like at 6, 7 a.m. this morning. It seems to be at that time, doesn't it, when it gets the coolest? Yeah, that was the point where I put my feet in the duvet. I was like, ah, oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Look at Sarah. And Chris, for that matter. Sarah just sat there in a, on her little throne. The Sarah throne, in fact. The Sarah Princess of Seacroft throne. <laughs> With her little pineapple in the corner. Just sat behind her. All pineapple-like. And um, talking all about how... It's only so much degrees and oh my god, it's so cool because it's only 25 degrees today. We're so happy that we've had all this hot, hot weather and we're here in our caravan with our little throne, the Sarah throne. Princess Sarah of Seacroft on her princess throne and there she has her pineapple in the background. Oh, it's so cute and lovely. Anyway, sorry, <laughs> I went off on a tangent about Sarah and her Seacroft princess-like throne. And it's only 25 degrees, but it could be 17. But who knows? You know, Sarah is so... Whew. Such an entitled attitude is what I'm getting at. Sorry about that. <laughs> I still don't sleep with a duvet on. Anyway... I oh, Sarah. Oh, the images I have in my head right now. Don't sleep with the duvet on. Don't sleep with pyjamas on, so I hear. So, you know, Chris is a lucky, lucky guy. Honestly, Chris, you must ha <laughs> Wow. Just wow. Lovely. It's a nice 28 degrees right now. <laughs> I looked over at you this morning and you had no duvet on you and I had the full duvet on me because I was cold. And I was like, is she cold? So I put it on her. I was like, no, I got back to sleep. I felt tired. If I was cold, I'd take it from you. Well, no, <laughs> and I you I know, I would... she should have took some off me by now, but she didn't. No, I, felt, I was felt fine. fine. I was fine. I don't need the duvet. I'm always hot anyway when I'm in bed. Hot anywhere, Sarah. Absolutely stunning. Stooning, as Chris would say. Absolutely stunning. Beautifully hot. I just have so many images and Chris just stop me if you start to get jealous or anything but you know the the picture oh. but anyway hang on Chris did you just put like a skull emoji over Sarah when she said that she was hot in bed is that <laughs> you know I'm only joking when I'm talking about stuff like <laughs> with Sarah in bed okay so if anybody's offended I'm sorry but Chris what what was with the emoji that why why was that was that to say that yes yeah, Sarah you are hot in bed or Sarah what the fuck are you talking about being hot in bed I don't mean <laughs> I just felt a little bit icky 
day. It was also really nice this morning when we came out to be able to sit outside and it just be nice and cool and breezy. It's hot. It's hotted up a bit now. It's just coming up to the afternoon. I think it starts for it's coming up to midday. Sorry. Sorry, I will do. Right, anyway, um, this is we've, we've not even seen any of this campsite. I will say that yesterday we were a bit disappointed. We went to a few different campsites and we didn't stay at them. They were like three times cheaper than this one. But we didn't stay at them because we didn't like how you didn't get a pitch. Oh, does poor Sarah Ingham need a pitch of her own? She needs to be all alone, out with the confines of everybody else, so they don't disturb Princess Sarah of Seacroft. So that she can be alone on her throne with her pineapple. I said this at the end of yesterday's vlog, but Chris didn't include day, but anything. And I was like, I don't want to stay there because I like to have a bit of privacy and like... I'm sorry, Sarah. I just can't take you seriously while you sat there with your pineapple <laughs> and talking about wanting privacy whilst broadcasting it to, what, 30,000 people online. Privacy. Oh, that's funny. Privacy, Sarah. Wonder if your kids would like some privacy too, but, you know, does it just extend to campsites, does it? Let's just keep looking. And every single one we went to was the same. So we were like, is it just a Portugal thing? So it's like, let's book a yellow site. Surely a yellow campsite will have like pitches. So this was the last one. We couldn't keep going. This is not yellow. You said it was? No, I didn't. You did? No, I didn't. It's like a yellow site. It's like a resort, which is, it's not a yellow site. Oh, I told your mum this morning it's a yellow site. Oh, that's you being silly, isn't it? No, that's you saying it was like a yellow site. You shouldn't have said that. Yeah, Chris, how dare you make me think that it was a yellow campsite? How dare you? How very dare you? Because if I didn't hear you say it's like a yellow campsite, I would never, ever have told your mother that it was a yellow campsite, okay? It's your fault. You told me that you thought it was like one, but obviously that meant to me that it was one. So I'm passing the blame on to you now. Sat here with my pineapple. I thought you meant it was. Oh, it doesn't matter anyway. Oh, but Sarah, clearly it does matter to you. The tone of her voice as she changed from a sort of a high pitched to a, I thought you meant that. I did, think, I did think you meant that. You shouldn't have told me that. It was a very kind of snarly voice, I'm sorry. And, um... <laughs> clearly it's affected you. <laughs> you can actually imagine the way that Sarah acts off camera. Because sometimes it comes through on camera. It's quite funny when you catch it in action. <laughs> She's not this, you know, lovely person. She tries to portray for the camera. I mean, if you can say that she's a lovely person, but she tries to put on the act for her fans. But when every now and again it comes through that she's just like, you know, she she must be horrible <laughs> off camera. This is another site. We couldn't not stay at this one because it was getting late. But it's the same. There's no pitches and there's just... It it's just feels like chaos. Yeah. It's like a free-for-all. It's like a... It's, it's a bit like a massive field, but on different levels and just mud down. Um, and so and you just so get you, wherever you can. And if you leave for the shots, you have to leave something on your path <laughs> yeah. the ground. Otherwise someone steals someone's going to steal your pitch, yeah. So Should have taken your caravan then, shouldn't you? At least then you'd have had a car to to drive yourself to the shops and you'd be able to leave your caravan behind with you. But no, no, no. You have this massive truck, more like a bus really, isn't it? And um, yeah, you can't leave it alone. But imagine sitting there. It's just, again, I'm going to go back to the whole entitled thing. Just sat there saying, oh, look at us. We're on our holidays and we're, we're so you know, entitled that we think that the world revolves around us. The campsite is too small and people want to just come in, invade our privacy whilst we're trying to sit here in our 25 degrees with our awning and everything else. It's just, oh, it must be hard being in Ingham, right?
It's not like a, they're not like pitches. And trust me when I say, if someone can squeeze their van in, in beside yours, they're gonna squeeze it in. Um, yeah, and it just feels a bit. That's why we spread ours out as much as possible. It feels a bit chaotic, <laughs> but this, the van at the side of us. So we've got quite a bit of space here where a few people left this morning. But then there's a van at the side of us, like right, right at the side of us, so close. Our awning's almost touching their van. But I will say that they're lovely. They're a Scottish couple and they came out this morning to say hello. They've said we can use their chairs if we need any extras. They said you like, you got your hands full. Obviously we've got five children um, and they're here for a, a wedding um, and they're really lovely and they're gone most of the day. So I said to them when they came out this morning, because obviously we've put our awning out and it's really close to their van. I felt really like we were intrusive. Our awning, yeah, because they were here first. Oh God, yeah. I can imagine the Inghams rocking up there. There's a, there's a, a lovely couple there, just there on the holidays, out for a wedding, and they just pitched up, and the Inghams come along, and just, they're shouting and screaming, they're having birthday parties, they're having pre-birthday parties, and then, you know, all the kids, they're screaming, sorry, I, you know, I don't mean to pick on the kids or anything like that, but they are just ripping up the place having been a previously very quiet and calm and collected area for tranquility and um, the Inghams come along and they uh, just destroy the whole thing. Complicated, we're not aligned. You're so cool. I've got me, I'm going to put on the test. Right. I'm not going to lie, this pool is a bit chilly. A little bit. <laughs> Everywhere we go, we can't be in a really hot country <laughs> and be moaning. The pools are too hot. Listen, it's listen, so hot. This is the and then we come somewhere nice and cool, and the pool's cool, and be like, it's too hot. No, no, no. We, can't, no. we have to be grateful. No, but it doesn't really make sense though. In the really hot country, the pools are all really heated. Yeah, and then in the cooler good. country, the pools are like ice. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, isn't that the most in entitled thing you've ever seen in your life? She literally spent about five or ten minutes just sat at the caravan <laughs> and complaining and um, being entitled and everything. And then she moved the conversation <laughs> to the pool. <laughs> she actually moved the conversation to the pool where they were, you know, lapping it up in a life of luxury in a campsite pool in Portugal's hot hot country and yeah they're gonna com continue complaining about the same thing that they were complaining about back at the campsite but in a pool setting this time because where else would you like to complain except for you know just relaxing in the pool <laughs> I'm finding the whole thing quite comical to be honest with you just got back to the van after a lovely couple of hours in the pool it's such a lovely lovely day today can I make an observation, Sarah, if I may? And it's not about the uh, pineapple in the background, but I don't feel like you've done anything today. I mean, I'm right. I know you're on your holidays, so your holly bobs and everything else, right? But what, from what I've observed, anyway, you've been at the caravan and you've been moaning and saying how hot it is and how cold it is now compared to how hot you've been and everything else, right? Then you went down to the pool for a couple of hours and you spent the time doing whatever it is you did in the pool. You just relaxed complained about it being too cold in the pool but just generally you had fun or whatever right and now you've come back to the caravan where you were earlier in the day and you're just going to mess about there for a little bit longer and you're going to give a an early birthday present to the kids that's what's about to happen now and uh, yeah it doesn't feel like you've actually achieved anything in the day I'm, you know, maybe it's just me. Maybe I have higher expectations for a holiday. I know you'll say, oh, but we're on holiday, Dougal. We want to just relax by the pool. But that is literally everything you do ever, every single day. One day just intermingles with the next. And to me, it just feels like a wasted opportunity. I know you'll say, this is not what that holiday is about. We could go and... <laughs> and find you know places of interest but that's not what this holiday is about we've already had that speech so um this holiday is clearly about just lazing around the pools and uh, 
and by the caravan, which seems to be, on the face of it, the most mundane, boring thing that you could ever do. And yet you're going to do it and film it and show it to your fans who are having to live through it as well. My God. Finally a cold pool. Oh, yeah, finally a cold pool. Um, Jason Miller, uh, um, well, basically, I'm going to give them an early birthday present. I'm saying Jason Miller, obviously it's Miller's. Um, but they will both get enjoyment out of this. I bought some Fisher Price Little People toys. Now, Sarah, I usually wouldn't comment on these sort of things because, quite frankly, it's just stupid. <laughs> kind of. But a couple of things I've noticed, right? Firstly, when you say you're going to give Jace and Mila a gift, but it's clearly for Mila because it's her birthday. But they'll both get enjoyment out of it. Well, who is it for then? Is it for Jace or is it for Mila? Okay, right. Here's a couple of things that might stand you in good stead, Sarah. Firstly, it's Mila's birthday. It's for Mila, right? No ifs, no buts, no Jace. You can have a little go if you want a little go. Let Mila open the bloody birthday present, right? It's hers. End of story. It doesn't matter whether you think that Jace might get enjoyment out of it or not. Don't even suggest to him that it might be fun for him to have a go, right? Just leave him out of it. It's not his. It's Mila's. Let Mila have her gift, right? The other thing that I noticed was when Jace was... <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I actually found this quite funny. It's not funny, but it I did actually find it a little bit comical because Jace has clearly been told not to uh, to touch as Mila's opening it. But you can see his poor little, like his face and his, like, he's twitching, wanting to open it desperately, but he's not allowed. You can see it. And this is not, a slight against Jace and I won't accept any criticism of Jace for this because absolutely since Jace was born he was brought up by his parents to believe that the world revolved around him and that he was everything and nobody else mattered right this is how jace has been brought up he's never been corrected he's always been given things toys ice creams easter eggs just to shut him up does everybody remember when he was like less than one and he'd be crying in his high chair and sarah would come along and just stuff him full of sweets because it shut him up he didn't sarah cannot deal with jace or anybody else making a fuss and moaning and complaining and crying she doesn't want to deal with it so she won't deal with it the other thing i noticed during the course of this video was in the pool jace appeared to push isla away telling her to go away isla did not leave him alone and kept following him as he kept moving away from her, it felt very uncomfortable. And I'm not criticizing Ayla either in this because Ayla has been brought up to not know any boundaries. She's not been told respect Jace's boundaries. Jace doesn't want you near him right now. Do not go near him right now. I know I only should know this. She's 11. But bear in mind, she basically stopped being who she was from the moment they took her out of school. And she was eight when they took her out of school. So since then, she stopped where she was. So don't think of her as an 11 year old. Remember that she's not mentally you know and she's not at the age of her peers and that's because chris and sarah have stunted that since that one moment and it's very sad and 
this is what I'm trying to get at is the two points I've mentioned here, Sarah, is because you have stopped your kids doing and being who they should be. And uh, it's really sad. It's upsetting, to be honest. Ow, oh my gosh, baby girl is so strong. Sometimes when she kicks, it proper takes me by surprise and hurts. <laughs> she just did anyway um i've got a couple of book recommendations not filmed too much today well we probably have i always say that and then end up being surprised i've got a couple of book recommendations i've been re i've loved reading on this trip <laughs> so, i'm absolutely howling at the fact that you're about to do a book review <laughs> while sitting in the toilet on the throne may i add we had the throne earlier on, on her entitled throne. This time she's on the other type of throne. <laughs> she's about to do a book review on the... Th oh, my words. Absolutely brilliant. Only Sarah Ingham could come up with this shit. Shit, get it? And I have read a few books. I've downloaded... Um, I've read the books that I brought away with me, so I've had to download some now. And I'm currently reading a Simon Koenig, probably my favourite author. I read one of his books first. It was The Relentless. Oh my god. I've not read it for years. Probably maybe like 10 years, maybe even longer. But it was such a good book and I loved it so much that I was completely hooked on all his books. And I've always enjoyed every book I've read of his. I'm currently reading Siege, I think it's called. Um, and I'm only halfway through that. It's quite a big one. But... Don't worry if you're halfway through it and it's just too... <laughs> it's quite a big one, Seth. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> it's quite a big one. Don't worry, Sarah. Just push a little harder. You'll get it out soon. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Resorting to toilet humour. And um, it's not my fault, okay? Sarah decided to do her book review in, on the toilet. I, <laughs> this is what I've, um, I've succumbed to. On this trip, I've also read The Silent Patient, which has a very good ending. There's a twist. I'm not obviously going to give away anything in this. There's a twist though, and it's got a very good ending. Okay, no, absolutely not. I hate it when people do that. There's a massive twist at the end. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but there is such a huge twist that it's so amazing. you got to watch the ending. Don't forget the ending because of the twist. I'm not going to tell you what it is, though, because I don't want to spoil it for you. It is such a big twist, though. Which makes it worth the read it was a slight it's not a slow book but it was slightly slower than some other books that i've read but it was a really good book so if anyone's looking for a read get on amazon get yourself it or a bookstore whatever you fancy and get yourself this it's a really good book so only she knows what happened only i can make her speak so it's about a patient that basically is found with her dead husband that has been murdered and she goes completely silent and no one truly knows what happened. Oh, but should Christopher be worried? That's the question, isn't it? Reading a book. Is it a how-to manual? Reading a book about how to kill your husband? Chris, be worried. Be afraid. Be very afraid. It has a really, really, really good twist at the end. I did enjoy reading that. I read that in like a few days. But you must be a very fast reader, Sarah, or a parent with very little to do. Because <laughs> hands up those parents who are able just to sit there and read a book straight for a couple of days and get it finished whilst you've got two toddlers running about, you know. Do you have enough time to get those books read, read or even those dishes washed? I think I enjoyed this one better. Did I enjoy this one better? I think this one was maybe a bit faster paced. This one's called The Accomplice. And her husband is... A, I'll just read what it says in the front. Her husband is a serial killer. But did she know? Oh, this time it's all about Chris being the killer, isn't it? Ooh, 
this is exciting stuff, isn't it? So, uh, it's at this point, I kind of think that Sarah may well be trolling. You know, she sat on the toilet telling us about a book that is about killing your husband. <laughs> And another book about your husband being the killer. So, I, to me, it feels like she's just taking the piss, to be honest with you. <laughs> anyway, that was Sarah Ingham's Toilet Book Review. If you would like to tune in tomorrow, perhaps we'll have a, a, a second, a number two book review. Oh, fucking hell. Anyway... I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Inghams and um, please give this video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel obviously, comment everything you want to comment down below and until next time enjoy the sun, it's sunny for one day only I believe, until next time take care of yourselves and bye bye. <laughs>